everybody, it's the War Hipster here coming at you with another Contrast Plus painting tutorial and today we are painting the Dark Master, Bellacor. Yes, we are painting him finally. He's been on my desk for a little while, um, just because I've been trying to find the time to get to him after all of the Cursed City videos, which I hope you have very much enjoyed. This is very exciting for me because this is the first unit in my tale of many war hipsters. If you don't know what that is, you can check out the launch video that we did uh, to kick off the project. You can check it out here on YouTube. Also, a couple of other things that we're doing is we've got a brand new painting mat. Look at how clean and wonderful it is. The old one hasn't been thrown out. It's just been retired for now. <laughs> The other thing that we're doing that's quite interesting in this video is we've actually done something called zenithal priming. Now zenithal priming basically involves what you can see here where you, you have a kind of dark colored base of a prime and then you overspray it with a much brighter colored base, uh, base spray. And what we've done in this case is we primed Bellacor black and then from an angle, much like as you can see from my camera angle here, we've then sp sprayed gray sear across it at the top like this. The reason for this is that we want some much darker shadows where we can get them. So for example, in here and around the chest, you can see that whilst I've done quite a heavy zenithal prime, you can see there is that difference in the recesses down there. Also, if you look at it from this angle, you see it almost looks like dark gray, whereas from that angle, it looks a lot brighter. You don't have to do this for this miniature, of course. You can just spray it with gray sear or, well, a wraith bone if you really want to, but that's the reason why we've done that is so that we can get kind of a little bit more definition out of those recesses for our dark master himself. So without further ado, we're gonna grab our paints and we're gonna grab our brushes and we're gonna tell you the last bit. He has actually been built in two sub assemblies. We've got the base here separately and we've got Bellacor himself there like that and this is just for ease of painting with him because he's quite quite chunky as you can see that's quite a lot to try and navigate around the camera now what we're going to do is we're going to work on bellicor first then we're going to work on the base simple so as i say grab your paints grab your brushes and let's get started so the place we're going to start on bellicor so we are going to start on his wing membranes. This is because this is a large expansive area and we want to kind of paint from the top down. But there's going to be a lot of underpainting going on, so try to keep up. <laughs> what I'm also going to demonstrate is I'm actually going to demonstrate an answer to a question that I get asked quite a lot, and that is how I mix my paints. Because we often talk about one-to-one -one or six-to-one or seven-to-one mixes, and I thought this would be a good opportunity to show you how I do it. So... What we're going to do is we are going to start work on those wing, wing membranes, as I said, and the colour we're going to make is a roughly one-to-one -one mix of Black Templar and Wildwood. And what we're going to do is we're just going to pop Bellicor to one side just for a moment here. We'll just lean him up against his base like that. And so the, very, the, the technique is very simple. What we're going to do is we're going to use this medium layer brush, and this is because this is the brush I'm going to be using to paint the wing membranes. And this just means that the mixes stay consistent to the size of brush that I'm using. And what we're going to do is we're just going to firstly take our black templar on a brush. We're going to load it up quite significantly like that. And we're just going to pop that onto a piece of palette paper like this. Just get as much of it off as we possibly can. Then what we do is we wash our brush off in some water. And what we're going to do is we're going to once again, just like with the black templar, we're going to grab one brush full. Of wildwood, got a little bit more. So we've properly loaded it up like that. And then what we're going to do, just going to put it next to the Black Templar. Then we're just going to mix it in together like this. Now on a much smaller miniature, what you would then want to do is you want to then, then wash the brush off so that you don't have loads and loads of paint on your brush. You can then gauge how much you need. But because these are quite large areas, what we're going to do is just going to take it straight from that palette and we're just going to start painting it all over those wing membranes. Just like this. Now that one mix won't be enough. 
to get you through the whole thing. So you will have to make a couple. But don't worry. It's a very simple mix to do. It's just one to one. And it's always a rough mixture. Contrast paint is quite forgiving in terms of the, the mixtures I find. If you've got a little bit more of one and a little bit less of the other in one mixture, it's generally not the end of the world. I find that with like traditional layer and base paints, you really absolutely kind of need to get it as close to perfect every single time. I find with contrast paints, you don't really need to rely on it so much. That's why I always kind of say, roughly. Now one thing that's quite good to do is that when you're doing this type of wing membrane just here, what you'll notice sometimes is if you've not been a little bit precise, you get a bit of overspill on the back. So it's always good to just, I haven't got it on this one, but it's just a good idea to kind of go back and do this side as well. So that when you then come to do it proper, well, if you do one side all the way through, what you'll then do is you'll turn it over and you'll discover there's a little bit of dark patching here and you might end up with some weird streaks, which you don't want. You just want to go over all of these wing membranes like this. And they're quite textured, so it's reasonably easy to get quite a smooth finish on these without having to kind of worry too much about brush load. Just make sure that you don't overload it too much in terms of how much paint you have on your brush because that that is a problem that you can run into. There we go, just like that. So what you can see is I've already used up all of my paint there. So what I'm gonna do is I'm now gonna just make another mix and do it right next to it. And what you can do obviously is it because it's one to one? It's a very simple mix. You can just make one brush load there of black templar. You can then grab a second brush load of black templar and just add that into the pile like that. As long as what you then do is in your wild wood. You then grab one brush load. Oh no, don't need to go back to the water just yet because we haven't mixed it. And then we grab two brush loads and then we mix them all together. Just like that. So that gives you a little bit more paint to work with. So you don't end up having to make so many mixes. But obviously, if you're more comfortable, you can just keep making them as one-to-ones. And so with that done, what we're now going to do is we're going to take some Basilicanum Grey and we're going to use this to paint in the wing spines and arms? Is that what we call them? Anyway, what we do is we take our Basilicanum, brush on our, uh, Basilicanum Grey on our brush and we just start painting it in all over these areas. Now we do want to get all the way up to his body. Now don't worry if you do a little bit more than this. The recipe is fairly similar for the wings and his actual skin as well. It's just we're doing it this way so that we kind of get a very specific section going, as it were. And so with that done, what we now want to do is we want to blend those spines and the membranes into a same similar sort of black whilst also retaining some of this browniness and also the distinction between what is going to be a cold black and a warmish kind of fleshy brown wing membrane. So the colour we're going to make is roughly three parts contrast medium to one part black templar but we are going to keep that contrast medium on hand because we were using that at the same time. And what we want to do is we want to firstly take our mix on our brush 
we just want to pick an area to start and I'm going to start right around here on the wing arm type area and you want to paint this all over all of that basilicon and grey just like that and come down here like this make sure we get it right in there all over the top like that. What we also then want to do is we want to also take the same mix and over the top of that brown, browny black, I should say, so we want to paint this all over, just like this. Now, because it's quite thin, you'll see that there is, it just adds a little bit more darkness and depth to it. But what we do then is we wash the brush and then we grab some contrast medium. And just around this kind of area, just want to use that contrast medium to just thin it out a little bit and lift it off just a tad in the middle. So I'll demonstrate this again. Maybe this time on one of the much wider span wing spans. So for example, around here, what we want to do is we want to take that Black Templar, thin down Black Templar mix, and just paint it all over the wing membrane like this. I've actually not made enough here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna make a little bit more. Take one of these black Templars. And then we want one, two, three. Just mix it all together. On the palette, there we go. I'm just going to just come back onto the wing. Make sure we get the whole thing done before we do the Next step. There we go. And then once again, wash that brush. Grab some contrast medium just on its own, straight out the pot. And just around the middle of that wing, just want to add that contrast medium. Just like this, just to thin it out a little bit. And lift off any kind of real excess that we don't want. So you just want to go around like this. And then we'll come back. And so with that done, what you should now have is two very distinct looking blacks on the wings. Now, if we zoom in a little bit here, you see that it's somewhat browner around here on the membrane and a lot kind of colder and more kind of bone-like on the spine itself. So what we're going to do now is we're going to add a little dry brushing and the color we're going to be using is storm vermin fur and we're going to be using this for the wing membrane and what we want to do is we're going to just very gently run this over the top just like this just picking out that edge as well what this is going to do is just going to add a little bit of that kind of browny organic -y sort of texture that we want to the wing well, it's not being kind of too kind of clean of a highlight you don't want it to be really clean because you know this this is really I hate to use the word living because he's not really he's a demon but it's an organic texture rather than kind of the hard, scaly, armored nature of his skin. So we're just adding this over that softest part of him, just like this. 
And with that done, Bellicor's wings should look somewhat like this. They're already looking pretty awesome. So what we're going to do now is we're just going to add a little bit more brightness into them. And the colour we're going to be using is Carrack Stone. And once again, we're going to be doing a dry brush. And what we want to do is we just want to very gently concentrate this towards the middle of our wing membranes. I'm showing you on the back just because it's a little bit easier to get at. We want to do this on both sides, just like that, right down the middle. Can you see? Similarly on here. And so with that done, what we're now going to do is we're going to use some thinned down Dawnstone. I'm going to use this to highlight the spines we originally painted with the Basilicarum Grey. So for example, just here, what we want to do is we very carefully start picking out the sharpest areas just like this. So with that Dawnstone applied, like so, what we're now going to do is going to take some Administratum Grey and we're going to use this as a spot highlight over the top of those Dawnstone highlights. What we do is we take a teeny tiny amount of this Administratum Grey and for example around here on the spines themselves what we want to do is just add a little bit of it just here, just here and there like that, make that a little bit bigger, just like that. Just to give it kind of a little bit like a bright anchor point in amongst all the dark. What we can do about halfway down the spine, just add a tiny amount like that, just so it looks like the light's kind of reflecting off these areas. So maybe down here, just add a little bit like this, a little bit like that. And about halfway down, just add a little bit going down the spine like that. Just like this. So just want to go around all of these areas, adding these little spot highlights like this, and then we'll come back. And so with that administratum grey applied to all of those sort of cleaner black areas, what we're now going to do is going to try and blend some of those highlights all together. And what we're going to do first and foremost is on the membranes. It's going to make a roughly six parts contrast medium to one part dark oath flesh and this makes just a really really runny really thin dark oath flesh-esque mi mix. What we're going to do is we're just going to paint this all over the top of our wing membranes just like this. And this adds just a little bit of kind of an organic texture to that black whilst also just unifying those highlights a little bit. Just like that. And with that done, the wing membranes are now finished. So what we're going to do is we are going to now help with those like little veins and things popping through a skin. And the color that we're going to do is going to use some Volupus pink. What we want to do is just over the top where we've highlighted them, just want to add this Volupus pink. Just 
just like that. Don't want to use loads, just small amounts of Hooper's Pink at a time. With that done, what we're now going to do is we're going to move on. I'm going to grab some grey sear. I'm going to use this to basically just make sure that all of our talons and hort things like that on the wings are a nice consistent colour. And so with that done, what we're now going to do is we're going to use two colours. We're going to use Griff Charger Grey and Skeleton Horde. I'm going to be using this on all of those horn-like talon areas around his wings. We're just focusing on the wings, I should say, because there's a very obvious horn-like talon area. Well, horn error, and that's his head. We're not going to be doing it in the same way. So, the method. What we're going to do is we're going to first grab some Griff Charger Grey. Just like this, kind of like that. And what we want to do is we just want to paint this Griff Charger Grey all over the top of each of our talon areas. Just being careful not to have too much there, so I'm just going to use my brush to mop that up a bit. Like that. And then what we do we grab a very small amount of skeleton horde and towards the tip of the horn you just want to add this in like that very small amounts just like this and if the effect is a little too much what you can do is just go back and grab a little bit more griff charger gray just add that in as over the top of the skeleton hole, just like that. So what we want is this kind of blue to a bonish kind of blend. So once again, do it here on this one. Just take that Griff Charger Grey, get it all over, nice and smooth, not too much. Same on the other side. Just like that. And then what we do is wash the brush, grab that tiny amount of skeleton hoard, and just towards the tip, just add that in, like that. Just like this. If you want to go all of these horns just like this, come back. And with that done, what we now want to do is we're going to use some thinned down Corax White. We want to use this to highlight more of our talons and horns. And what we do is we do this by picking out all of the edges. So we've got the very obvious ones going like this. And then we've also got the ones that go along, along the middle. So with that done, all of our talons look like this, which is pretty awesome. So what we're now going to do, I told you we're going to do a clever thing. <laughs> we're now going to take Griff Charger Grey and we're going to go over the top of the whole horn. And what this will do is it will blend in that white highlight. It'll make the skeleton horde feel more like it's part of the horn. And it'll add a little bit of extra shadow into that Griff Charger Grey that's already there. Just like this. And so with all of our talons done, what we're now going to do is going to work on our chains. The colours that we're going to use 
these iron warriors. I've got some thin down here on my palette. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to start coating this all over all the parts that I want to be silver. Now I'm going to do any of the connectors to the skulls, gold, well, sort of, not very nice gold, but um, <laughs> any of the kind of butcher's hooks and things, these are also going to be silver. And any of the hoops attaching these chains to his wings, they're going to be a sort of brassy gold as well. So we're just doing the chains here, basically. And any of these little plates, you can see, for example, on this skull here, there's one on this skull as well. These are all going to be silver. With that done, what I'm going to do is we're going to take some thinned down Retributor armor. I'm going to use this to paint in our gold details. So what we've got is I'm going to do this little mace ball here with the Retributor armor. I've got the casing here on this well, I guess it's another mace. <laughs> there, like that. We've got the crown on the head of this skull. And we've got the detail here on this, what I assume is a crown. Just here around the inner rim. We've also got this spiked area here. And with that done, what we're now going to do is we're going to use some thin down rune lord brass. I'm going to use this to paint in all of the rings. So we've got this one here. That's a good example. Now, something you need to be careful of when you're doing these is that some of them migrate their way onto the back. So that same one we've just done. It's just there. Like that. So you just want to take this a ring at a time, just so that you don't miss any. So I've done that one. So what I would do is I would now go over to this one. So that I know to go over to the other side. Just check it's there, and of course it is. And with that done, what we're now going to do is we're going to take some skeleton horde. We're going to use this to paint in all of the skulls. And next up, very quickly, what we're going to do is we're going to use some wildwood to paint in the hair that still remains on a couple of these skulls. There's some just here on this one. And there's some just down here on this one as well. And so with that done, what we're now going to do is we're going to shade all of our metallics. And for this, we're going to be using one-to-one -one mix of contrast medium and basilicon and grey. And the reason I've added that contrast medium in there is that I've just got a little bit more flow. And it's a bit easier to control. And we're going to do this over all of the metallics. 
Okay, the silver, the brass, and the gold. And so with that done, it's now time to add some highlights. And what we're going to do is we're going to first take some iron hand steel. We're going to use this to highlight all of our sh sh silver. Good lord. <laughs> And with that done, what we're now going to do is we're going to take some Canoptic Alloy. I'm going to use this to highlight the rings. Just like this. And then next up, we're going to take some Sycorax bronze and use this to highlight all of the areas we originally painted with Retributor armor. So all of our gold details. And next up, we're going to take some Pallid Witch flesh. I'm going to use this to highlight the skulls. And so with that done, our wings are now finished. Look at them, they look fantastic. So what we're now gonna do, we're gonna move on and paint him. So what we wanna do basically, so we wanna be very careful as we do this, but effectively find a good place to hold it. Now I recommend you could hold it by the wings if you wish, or you could hold it by the legs, do the entire of the top part and then do the second, you know, once that's dry, then just hold the wing just to kind of minimize the amount of time you're holding a place that you've already painted. We're not gonna put him on the base just yet because the base is so finely detailed and we wanna kind of have a clean slate when we come to paint it. So what we're gonna do is we are gonna paint him. Now he is very simple. What we are gonna do is we're gonna use Basilicanum Gray all over his horn, his skin. The only thing we're gonna avoid is the straps, but the other, basically the other details. So we just wanna, as I say, take Basilicanum Grey and just start painting it all over him. Now I'm going to start on the chest and I'm using a medium layer brush here. And what we want to do, we basically want to kind of pick a recess and then just kind of move it around. And you're just going to get nice, smooth, even coat. So I'm just going to start in here in his armpit and just move that Basilicanum Grey all the way around him. Just like this. You know, make sure that you work it into the recesses because it's very easy to miss one. And you just want to take it kind of like a section at a time. Now, hopefully, because he's so ripped, this is quite easy to do. What you don't want to do is like finish halfway through a muscle, leave it for a little bit, let it dry, and then come back. See what I mean? So you see how I've done all of this area. I'm just gonna come under here and get this bit done. Just like this. So we across the chest, what we can do is we can start here at the midway point. And just pull it out over his pectoral just like this so you just want to go around filling in all of his skin like this including the tail his head and his legs so with that done, you should have a bellicor that looks something like this. It looks pretty flipping awesome. 
right? Now the tail is drying, so we're not going to be focusing on that just yet, but once, once we've got most of him out of the way, the tail will be dry. And what you'll notice is I've got three colours open. I've got Griff Charger Grey, Black Templar and Contrast Medium. And this is because we're going to be doing a bit of blending as we darken his skin right down. And of course the horn and his tail, inevitably. So what we want to do is we want to make a roughly three parts Contrast Medium to one part Black Templar mix. And we want to keep our Griff Charger Grey open just next to us, just there. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to demonstrate how we're going to do this blending. So. On the horns, what we've got is we've got the central reservation of him, which is this area. We need to get that Black Templar all over, just like this, down to around about there. And then we want to just bring it out a little bit like that, and a little bit like that. Same again. Make this one up to around about there, and this one we're going to take out to around about there. Like that. And what we're also going to do is take a little bit more of this Black Templar just around the tip of the horn. Like that. And like that. And like that. And here and there as well. We're going to do that. Then what we're going to do is we're going to wash the brush. And then grab some Griff Charger Grey. And just where those colours meet. We're just going to add this Griff Charger Grey over the top. We'll have a Silicon Grey. Like so. Got a little bit more Griff Charger Grey. Just on this side. Add it like that. This gives it that kind of bluish texture that's similar in many ways to our talons and things. We just want to add a little bit here on this horn and a little bit there on that horn as well. A little bit around the face. There, like that. Like so. And we want to do a similar thing on the underside, but we're going to move on just for now, because what we want to do is we want to use our Black Templar mix over the rest of his armoury skin type area. I basically want to just avoid his chest. So we just want to get this Black Templar all the way up to that muscle there like that. We want to come right down his arm. We want to do his neck under here as well. And then you've got this like kind of stony armory area. I want to do that. There, like that. And that's the boundary for the chest. The rest of it stays basilicanum grey. We want to do this all over the top of all the skin. And when it comes to the tail, what we want to do this is very similar to the horn, is we want to take this Basilica, uh, Black Templar mix and we just want to take it all the way up to about halfway along the, the, the tail. There, like that. You see? Then we wash the brush, grab that Griff Charger Grey, and just over the top where the two colours meet. We just want to add it like that. And we want to do it out on both sides as well. So we're going to go around like this and then we're going to come back. And so with that done, you should have a bellicor that looks somewhat like this. Pretty cool, right? So what we're going to do now is we're going to add a little bit of a fade transition, if you will, to his chest. And the way we're going to do this, we're going to use two colours. We're going to use Black Templar and we're going to use Contrast Medium. And what we want to do is we want to take some Black Templar on our brush, just like this, just around here where the transition is, so under his armpit. Just want to add this Black Templar, neat, out the pot, 
We want to run it down here as well, like so. Then what we do is we wash the brush, grab some contrast medium, and just wet the basilicarn grey and the black templar meat. Just want to add this basilicarn grey light, uh, ugh. contrast medium like that, and just lift off any excess just to kind of make soften that transition a little bit so it looks a little bit more like he fades into the grey. If you want to, you can always take a little bit more Black Templar and just add it into the deepest recess. Like so. You want to do this on both sides. And next up what we're going to do is we're going to take a tiny amount of Black Templar and he's just add a little bit more definition into the muscles on his chest. Just using this as a recess highlight. A recess shade, I should say. And you need small amounts of Black Templar on your brush for this. And so with that done, it's now time to add some highlights onto him. And the colours that we're going to be using first is Karak Stone. I'm going to be using this to dry brush his horns. And with that done, you should now have the kind of dark grayish blue with a bony texture horns like this. So what we want to do is we're going to take a very small gentle dry brush of pallid witch flesh and just add this to the sharpest points of those horns. So with that done, the horns are finished. <laughs> so what we're going to do next is we're going to take some Dawnstone. I'm going to use this to dry brush all of the black. This is going to include that area just there on his head. Like that. We also want to dry brush all of his kind of armor and skin and things. We just want to be very gentle here. Just like this. And so with that done, you should have black skin and armor that looks somewhat like this. So what we're going to do now is we're going to add a little bit of a spot highlight and also going to reinforce some of those slightly kind of prominent highlights. And the color that we're going to be using for this is Administratum Gray. Now, the place we're going to start is on the back here on the tail. What we want to do is we basically want to add some kind of feathered highlights with the administratum grey just to make it look sharp and imposing. So rather than kind of running our brush, brush along the edge like that, what we want to do is we want to pick out these kind of cracks and things in it. Just like this. Like that. And we want to do that on the kind of armor joint, so all the way down the tail. So it'll take a little bit of time, but it's absolutely worth it once it's done. Additionally, what we want to do is on the kind of slightly smoother areas, 
particularly around here on the knee. So you just want to add a little bit of a administratum grey going through it, just to kind of add a little solidity to those highlights. So with that done, what we're now going to do is we're going to brighten up his chest just a little bit and we're going to be using Dawnstone. And we are going to be doing this with a dry brush, but we're going to be doing it slightly different to how we've done it before. And what we're going to do is we're going to do it in a circular motion, but what we want to do is we want to go three steps to clockwise, three steps to anti-clockwise over the same area. So what we do is we just, in a circular motion, do this and then go back over the same way. So one, two, three, one, two, three, just like that. With the Dawnstone, one, two, three, one, two, three. And this just gives it a very gentle coverage. Whilst kind of eliminating any scratchiness. And then next up, we're going to do the same thing again, but with administratum grey. So we're going to do one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. Okay, so you just keep going like this. And then next up, we want to take a tiny amount of grey sear. We want to add this to highlight his nipples. Just like that, as well as the eight pointed star on his chest. And what we can also do is use this as a spot highlight on his tail as well. So, with that done, we're now just going to press pause on painting the skin and stuff because, well, one of the things we need to do next is the kind of spikes and stuff sticking out of him. But the sensible thing to do would be to do the armor first before we then tackle those spikes that are in there as well, poking through his armour plates. So that's exactly what we're going to do. And the colour we're going to be using is Iron Hand Steel. We're going to be using this for the silver parts of our armour plates. That's basically everywhere on the armour that isn't the trim. Now next up with that done, what we're now going to do is we're going to use some thinned down Retributor armour to paint in all, all of the gold details. So we've got the trim. All of the armour panels like that. We've also got these two rings here. We've also got his anklet and his bracelet as well. Having just consulted with the box art as well, we can do the sword hilt. same time as well. And next up, I'm going to use some Volupus Pink. I'm going to use this to paint in his tabard. And so with that done, what we now want to do is we want to use some Iron Warriors and we're going to use it to paint in all the remaining metallics. So we've got all the chain mail and the hooks and stuff that are here is here on top of the tabard. We've got various little belt buckles and straps and things around about. So there's, there's one here. And so with that done, what we are now going to do is we're going to shade all of our metallics and our pink tabard 
And the color we're going to make is a roughly one-to-one -one mix of basilicanum gray and contrast medium. And what we want to do is we just want to start painting this all over. All of these details. And with that done, as you can see, he's taken a massive leap forward. So what we want to do is we just want to add a little bit of dirt to the armor, to the silver plate specifically. And the color we're going to make is a roughly three parts contrast medium to one part skeleton horde mix. And this is very thin. And it might not look like it's doing very much, but it is adding just a little bit of extra grossness, as it were, to that armour. It's just changing the tone a little bit to make it more in line with, well, with the box art. And so with that done, what we're now going to do is going to highlight our silver armor plates using some Stormhost silver. And with that done, some pretty awesome silver looking armor plates. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna highlight all of the gold and the color we're gonna be using for this is Canoptec Alloy. Just like that. And we want to do this on all of the gold. So that will include these rings up here, as well as his ring on his finger, and these areas, his bracelet, his anklet, and the sword hilt as well. And with that done, what we're now going to do is we're going to take some iron hand steel and we're going to use this to highlight all of our iron warriors areas. So we've got that little ring just there on his horns. We've got all of the various little buckles. And of course, we've got the hooks and the mail here on his tabard. And so with that done, what we're now gonna do is gonna highlight his tabard with some tusk or fur. And with that tusk or fur applied, what we then do is take some Cadian flesh tone and we use this as a little spot highlight just around the sharpest areas and around the corners of our fabric. And so with that done, what we're now going to do is we're going to take some wildwood I'm going to use this to paint in the straps and the leather. And with that done, we then use some skeleton hoard to paint in the skulls. And so with that done, it's now time to paint in all of our claws and spikes and things on him. And the colour we're going to make is a roughly two parts Griff Charger Grey to one part Skeleton Horde. So this is similar to when we did the wings. However, some of these are so small that it's not actually worth doing the kind of blending on the model and actually just making the mix 
on your palette will give you much the same effect, just on these much smaller areas. So you just want to pick out areas like his fingernails, these areas sticking out of his armor. And so with that done, what we're now going to do slightly differently to the rest of the horns is we're going to use some pallid witch flesh this time to highlight each of these little talons and spikes. It's just a slightly less kind of stark highlight than if we were to use Corax White again. With that done, what we then do is once again take some Griff Charger Grey and just over the top, just to blend that highlight into the rest of the horn or spike. like this. And next up we're going to use some pallid witch flesh and use this to highlight the skulls just like we did on the wings. And so with that done, well there's just a few more things left to do. And the first thing we're going to do just before we move on to the sword blade so we're just going to work once again on that eight point star on his chest. And this is very simple. All it is is we go take a roughly one to one mix of contrast medium and volupus pink. We want to very carefully take this volupus pink and just fill in the eight pointed star. And what we also want to do is just overlap it a little bit. So there's a bit of a pink stain. And with that done, what we now want to do is we're going to take some Talisar Blue. I'm going to use a slightly smaller brush than what I was doing, that's why I'm fiddling around there, using my size double zero here. Uh, and we're going to be using this on his eyes. Now what we want to do is just want to very, very carefully take this Talisar Blue. And just as it is, we don't need to brighten it up just yet because this is going to set as our base colour. We want to colour it over the eyeball and the bottom eyelid as well. Just like that. And just like that. And with that Talisar blue applied, what we then want to do is take some Lothern blue. We want to use this to highlight that bottom eyelid as well as the eyeball. And then with that done, what we then want to do is take a small, tiny amount of Baharoth blue. And add this as a dot in the middle of the eye. And just around the middle of the bottom eyelid. Like that, so it gives it that kind of bluish glow impression. And with those eyes done and the chest done, we can now move on to the sword. And we're going to start nice and simply by painting in the wrap. Now the colour that we're going to use for this is Saigal Brown. A little too much there on my brush. All we're going to do, as I say, is we're just going to paint in the wrap on the sword handle, just like this.
And with that done, the time has finally come to paint in the sword blade. Now, we're gonna be using three different colors here. We're gonna be using Achillean Green, Volupus Pink, and Contrast Medium. And the way we're gonna be doing it is, basically we're gonna be doing mostly Achillean Green, followed by a bit of Volupus Pink. We've got the Contrast Medium on standby in case we need to smooth out transitions or kind of keep some paint moving. Now don't worry if it's a little too bright at the beginning. We are gonna then do a further coat after this just to darken it down. But the first thing we're gonna do is I'm just gonna move that a little bit out of the way so I don't knock it with Bellacore's wing. What we're gonna do first is we're gonna take this Achillean green. And we're gonna paint this all over the sword blade. Just like this. We wanna move reasonably quickly here. So it doesn't have too much of an opportunity to just dry out on us. Just like that. Then what we're gonna do is wash the brush. I'm gonna grab Achillean Green once again. Now this time, we're now gonna move it up to about halfway on each of these trails. Try and keep it roughly the same height that it goes to across all of them. Obviously it doesn't have to be perfect. Like so. Then we wash the brush and grab some Volupus Pink. And where the colours meet, it's a little too much Volupus Pink. Where the colours meet, you just want to take it all the way up like this. Just like that. Wash the brush, grab a bit of contrast medium if you need to. And just apply it where the colors meet. Just to smooth out any transitions. If you need to, I've just got a couple I want to fix. Just going across the line like that. Perfect. Now, as I say, don't worry if it looks a little bit weird. We are going to fix it in just a minute. Similarly, we want to take this Achillean green and just down here in this area of the blade, we're going to add this. Don't worry if you get any of this just on those edge highlights that you've already done. You can just go and neaten it back up with a bit of canoptic alloy in them shortly. And so with that done, what we're now going to do is we're going to make a roughly five parts contrast medium to one part pterodon turquoise mix. We're now going to paint this over the whole thing. Blade. And the smoke trails going over the top of that purple, bloopers pink as well. And with that done, what we're now going to do is take some Lothern Blue. I'm going to use this to highlight all of the darker sections of the sword and of the trails. So we just kind of, for example, highlight that there like that. Then we just take this up the smoke. Up 
to kind of where the Volupus pink starts. And that's where we stop with the Blob and Blue. Just like that. Now this is going to be quite time consuming. So just take your time. And when it's all done, we'll come back. With that lot and blue applied, what we then want to do is take some demonet hide. We want to use this to continue on the highlights, but on the areas of the volupus pink. With that demonet hide applied, what we're then going to do is going to take some blue horror, close the pot for some strange reason, I'm not sure why. We're going to take this blue horror, I'm going to use it to add a spot highlight to our blue areas. So for example, just here along the tip of the sword, a little bit of it just there. Just picking out the sharpest areas. And all our blue. And with that blue horror applied, what we're then gonna do is take some slanish gray. I'm gonna do much the same thing, but on the purple areas where we added the demonet hide. And so, just like that, the Bellacor portion of Bellacor is finished. Look at that sword. Looks fantastic. Look at all of him. He looks fantastic. So, <laughs> what we're going to do is we're just going to bask in his glory for a few minutes. Obviously not on the camera, I'm going to do that myself. We're going to bask in his glory just for a few minutes. And then we're going to pop him to one side. And we're going to focus on the base. So the place we're going to start with on the base is with all of the sort of larvary blood type area. So this is the red that runs in between the stones. And the colour we're going to be using for that is Blood Angels Red. All we want to do is we want to pick an area to start. We want to go down here. I think is where I'm going to start. I just want to start painting this in, in between the stones. Sure to come all the way down here. So with that done, you should have a bellicor base that looks somewhat like this. Now you don't have to do half as many as I've done, or you can do even more. The ones I would recommend that you should absolutely do are the ones that are kind of coming out of these skull faces hidden in the rock. So what we're going to do now is we are going to work on all that rock and the colour we're going to be using is Basilicatum Grey. Now, don't worry too much if you accidentally get some of this Basilicatum Grey on the Blood Angels Red. That's absolutely fine. So with that done, you should have a base that looks somewhat like this. So what we're going to do now is going to darken that stone right down. And the colour we're going to make is yet another one-to-one -one mix of contrast medium and black templar. And we're just going to start applying this all over our stone.
So with that done, what we're then going to do is we're going to use some Leviathan Blue. I'm going to use this to paint in the armour on our Fallen Chaos Warrior down here. As well as the flat of the shield right here. Now I've glued this Chaos Warrior down because I intend to use this Bellicor as part of an Age of Sigmar army. I don't think it matters too much if you did want to use it in a 40k army. But obviously the other option that you can get in the box is a Space Marine. Now if you'd like to know how to paint the Space Marine in a number of different ways you can check out a bunch of tutorials on how to do that here. Seeing as we've not done a Chaos Warrior it might be quite fun to show it to you. And next up we're going to use some Black Templar over the top of that Leviathan Blue. No mixes this time, you'll be pleased to hear. <laughs> and next up we're going to use some Flesh Terrors Red to paint in the tabard. Our Chaos Warrior. As well as any kind of fabric on the shoulder areas. And next up, we're going to use some Wildwood. I'm going to use this to paint in his boot and his belt and the scabbard with this knife here. And next up, we're going to make a roughly two parts Griff Charger Grey to one part Skeleton Horde mix. I'm going to use this to paint in his cloak. With that done, it's still drying, but what we're going to do is we're going to use some Skeleton Horde. I'm going to use this to paint in his horns. I'm going to use it to paint in the beast skull of his belt buckle. We're also going to use it to paint in all of the skulls littered around the base. There's that beast skull just there. gonna go to work and with that done what we're now going to do is going to use some thinned down iron warriors to paint in all the silver details so this is include areas like the broken blade just there We also want to use this on his mail. Like that. But what we also want to do is use this to paint in the chains. Just like we did on Bellacore himself. And next up, we're going to use some thinned down Retributor armor to paint in all of our gold details. Like 
like that. It's just going to be areas like the trim on the shield, the trim down here on the armor, decorative features on the swords, and the scabbard over here on the knife, as well as this little area here, and this large, what I assume is half an eight-pointed star. And next up, we're going to take some Volupus pink. I'm going to use this to colour in the soft grips. On both the weapons. And next up, we're going to paint in all of the floating soul stuff. And rather than using Achillean Green this time, we're going to use Pterodon Turquoise because we don't need to add the Pterodon Turquoise to darken it down. Um, unlike on the sword, where we had that large Achillean Green, we just need to go straight with the ter Pterodon Turquoise on this one. So, what we do, just as we did on the sword, is we are going to start with Pterodon Turquoise. And we're going to paint this, going up about halfway on the strands, like so. Wash the brush and grab the Volupus pink and where the two meet. Colour in the rest of the strand, like that. What we can do, again, instead of using contrast medium, because these are quite small details, we can just use a little bit more Pterodon Turquoise to smooth out that transition. And for our last base coat, we're going to take some Dark Earth Flesh. I'm just going to paint this over his neck. And with that done, what we now want to do is shade all of our metallics using a one-to-one -one mix of contrast medium and basilicanum grey, just like on Big Daddy Bellacore himself. And with that done, you should have a base that looks somewhat like this. It's looking pretty cool. So what we're going to do now is we're going to start adding some highlights and we are going back to dry brushing. Now the first one that we're going to be doing is Karak Stone and we're going to be doing this across all of the stonework. And with that done, what we now want to do is we want to take some rust grey. We want to use this to highlight the black armour of our Chaos Warrior. And with that rust grey applied, what we're then going to do is take some Fenrisian grey and use this as a little spot highlight, just picking out areas like the rivets and corners and the sharpest areas on both our Chaos Warrior and the shield. And next up, we're going to highlight that cloak using some Rakarth flesh. And 
And then next up, we're going to use some Evil Sun Scarlet to highlight the red cloak. Well, fabric. And with that done, we want to use some Bane Blade Brown to highlight our leather details. So with that done, what we're now going to do is we're going to use some Fire Dragon Bright. We're going to use this to add a little spot highlight to our red fabric. What we're also going to do, just like that I should say, just adding to the sharpest edges. Like so. What we're also going to do is we're going to start highlighting up our lava trails as well. So we just want to pick out little areas. Just adding a bit of Fire Dragon Bright here and there to give it a little bit of extra oomph. With that done, you should have a bunch of lava and stuff that looks like this. So what we're going to do now, is we're just going to take a small amount of Flash Gets Yellow, not very much. We're just going to add this as a little spot highlight on top of our lava spotlights. So just like that. Just adding a little tiny bit here and there. Just to make it look really nice and hot. And just to make those little areas just pop just a little bit more. Just like that. It's a very subtle effect, but it's very effective. And so with that done, what we're now going to do is going to highlight all of our silver using some iron hand steel. And with all that silver highlighted, what we're then going to do is we're going to take some Liberator Gold and we're going to use this to highlight all of our gold. And so with that done, it's now time to highlight the soul stuff coming off this Chaos Warrior. So once again, what we're going to do is we're going to use Lother and Blue to highlight the sort of bluish sections. Or at the Pterodon turquoise sections in this case. Just stopping once we get towards the Belupus pinky area areas. And with that Lother and Blue applied, we then take that Demon at Hide, and add this over the top of our pinky purple sections. And with that Demon at Hide applied, we then take the Blue Horror once again and use this as a little spot highlight on the sharpest areas. Just like on the sword. And with that blue horror applied, we then take the Slanesh Grey. And do the same thing. On our purpley areas. And with that done, now time to colour in all of that neutral space and the colour I'm going to be using is Astro Granite Debris. So using my texture spreader. I'm just going to start putting this all over everywhere where there isn't any sculpted detail. Going right up. And 
of that done, what we're now going to do is going to shade all of that area with some basilicanum grey. And with that, then what we're now going to do is we're going to dry brush all of our soil with some Tyrant Skull. And we want to do all of that kind of astrogranite debris that we've just shaded with the Basilicanum Grey. We also want to catch any of the sculpted soil on the base, and this way it kind of blends the two colours together. And what we also want to do is add a very gentle spot dry brush, as it were, to our rocks. Which is very lightly. What we can also do is we can dry brush the skulls as well. And with that, Balancor is finished. I've added a few tufts to that base as well, just to give it a little bit of something to break it up, but he's done. All that's left to do is to paint in the rim of the base. And the color that we're gonna be using for that is Corvus Black. I'm just gonna do two coats of this just to make sure it's nice and dark. The ancient and malevolent being known as Belacor is ready to unleash a demonic storm upon the armies of Sigma and a demonic storm upon the armies of a tale of many war hipsters. Yes, he is my first entry into my very own project and he is where the beginning of my demonic legion is going to start and what an incredible way to kick off i mean come on now seriously look at this guy it's such a glow up <laughs> i think that's the right term from his original model he's gone from you know pretty cool to oh my goodness levels of cool and it was so much fun to pull this together. I think it's the first large black coloured miniature that we've done. And contrast paints haven't let me down. They've really kind of been able to push this model up to the next level, I feel. Particularly around those kinds of blends we've done on the wings and around on the skin and on the chest and things like that. And the sword might possibly be my favourite thing I've ever painted in my entire career. I hope you enjoyed this video. And I hope you find it useful painting your own bellicores. If you enjoyed this video, you love the channel, and you'd like to support me further, like these legends and bosses that you can see on the screen before you, you can do so. Head to patreon.com forward slash warhipster or head to ko-fi.com forward slash warhipster. Don't forget to share it, like it, comment on it, and don't forget to subscribe to the channel. And to make sure you stay up to date, don't forget to click the bell icon. Thank you so much for watching. And I'll see you all very soon in the next one. Happy Wargaming.